All right, we're streaming. Got it. Let me just stop this other screen. Hello, hello. Hello. It's always funny to say hello, like we haven't already said hello. I know. But we had to say hello to everybody who's watching. <laughs> hello, everybody <laughs> who's joining us now or later. Mm -hmm. You might recognize this beautiful face. Um, May Emily, I love you. Mm -hmm. So Emily and I work together. We think I could go back and look. We, we think we, oh, we, we always have no idea when it was. We're like, it was a few years ago, but we have no idea actually when. <laughs> I think it was two years ago. We started with a month intensive, and then we did a couple of we did a few one offs to support the intensive. And working with Emily was like so. It was profound and but so easeful and natural and like transformational as we're going to find out today so you've seen you've possibly seen emily come on before and talk a little bit about our work together and what that shifted and then we have some exciting news and actually let's start there let's start with the exciting news <laughs> <laughs> to the same man <laughs> to the same man who emily was dating now engaged to when we first started working together and it was a relatively new relationship we already had our tears about it last week <laughs> and honestly like i was so touched emily reached out to me saying do you want me to like share an update and share again about my experience and you know i was like i would love that that would be amazing i also love to paint the picture of what's possible whether even if you're you're observing just in the facebook group and that's as far as we'll ever go together maybe we can actually start with nothing that has nothing to do with me how you would can we say his name randall yeah yeah how would you and randall met because I think that that like a really beautiful inspiration and opening to what can be possible. Yes. So I had just moved back after uh, about five years of like full time travel all over the world um, to Chicago, and I was actually hadn't officially moved back. I was, I was like considering if I was going to move back. Um, I'd been back for a few weeks and I was thinking about signing a six month lease, my first lease in five years. And uh, I was sitting in a coffee shop and I actually had been at this coffee shop earlier that day. Um, mm -hmm. But I had left to go to a yoga class and I had a little bit of work. I just started my business a few months earlier. So I had a little bit of work I wanted to get done. And so I went back to this coffee shop. It was called Three Greens. And this coffee shop had these big, this big communal table. And so I was sitting at this big communal table and I was actually kind of on a coaching call with my cousin at the time and I'm coaching her and, and we're talking for like a long time, like 45 minutes. And I'm like really loud on the phone, you know, so anybody who's like sitting next to me, I'm like shouting and uh, there's lots of people who are kind of coming in and out of this communal table. And I hang up the phone and sitting literally right in front of me across from me is this man. And as soon as I get off the phone, I realize he's been eavesdropping on my whole conversation. <laughs> and I realized like, okay, this guy's been now, not only has he been eavesdropping, like, I'm pretty sure I saw like him get a salad. He's like been eating a salad and just like watching the TV show of Emily. Um, and right when Thank I get you. off, he, I had been planning a wellness retreat at the time called the deep. And so he just goes, so you plan wellness retreats. Tell me about that. And, oh, bye. <laughs> and we started chatting and we talked about, he also meditates and is a journaler. So we started bonding over meditation and journaling. Apparently I was the first person he'd ever told that he meditated. He'd never told anybody that before. Um, and we ended up sitting in this coffee shop for like three hours, just chatting and hanging and then that ultimately it was like a beautiful Chicago day it was June 7th uh 2019 it was this really really beautiful day and it was jazz fest 
And so we'd been talking about jazz fest and going to jazz fest and we just decided. And honestly, I can't remember if he asked me or if I asked him or if it was just like in conversation, but we just decided to go to jazz fest that night, which is, I guess, technically like our first date. And we ended up spending the whole weekend together. Um, and yeah, there's more to that story, but that's, that's yeah. how we met. Yeah, I love that. I love that because even when I'm working with women who are calling in love, I'm like, you know, like be online, go out in the world, like just open to connection. Mm -hmm. And you like, I can just imagine if I am a stranger or like whether I'm a woman or a man and I'm sitting next to you at a coffee shop, I would want to be all up in your business. I would want to be so close to you. And it's the vibe you give up. Like, I would just want to know, like, who is this woman and how can I know more about her? <laughs> Yeah. Well, the craziest thing was, is like literally a couple days before I had had a conversation with a new friend. I'd met this new friend and I had said to her, you know, I, I relationships and I'm sure we'll get into this. <clears throat> I'd always kind of been my, I would call it my black box. Like I'd done a lot of healing work up until that point. I'd been on my personal growth journey, but like romantic relationships was really the thing I still had like not touched. And I was in conversation with this new friend and I was like, well, I just started my business. Like I can't have a new relationship and build a business at the same time. And she was just like, why not? You're right. Like, why can't, why can't, why not? And it was like, you know, those conversations where all of a sudden it just something like clicks in and shifts that conversation. I remember I left that conversation. I was like, yeah, why not? And so like, I was on this little kind of like energetic high, literally just from that conversation. And I remember it was like, that was the next day or two days later. And I remember I was, I was in the world. And for the first time, I think maybe ever, but definitely in a long time, I was like actually open. I like yeah. felt open to like meeting people. I remember I like saw some other guy on the train and I was like, thought he was, you know, I was like, yeah, you know, yeah, I was, like, yeah, yeah. You yes. know? right. And so that I was that. I think one of the, like interesting yeah. parts about that is like, I really hadn't been open for so long. Yeah. And it was like this, that, that second, that shift of like, I'm ready. And all of a sudden I like, I'm open to this. And it was like, Boom. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so wild. Okay. So you mentioned the black box. Let's talk about the black box. Cause I remember that coming up in our month intensive. And so however much you want to say, like what the black box was for you, what it represented and then what, what started to help you open the box? Yes. Okay. So a little bit of context for our relationship. So we like, we like dove in really fast, the two of us. And we were basically, we'd spent that whole weekend together and we were dating, like calling each other boyfriend and girlfriend by like day five, by two, the next Tuesday. Right. So things like moved really, really fast. He had the day before, literally the day before had ended something with someone who he'd been on and off with for five years. So he had just come out of that and that ultimately like was really triggering for me in, in a lot of ways early on in our relationship. Yeah. And he probably needed more time to process that. And he didn't have it because he was all of a sudden in this like serious relationship with someone who he like thought he might want to marry. Right. So there was just kind of a lot of stuff that really started to come up and it ended up being, it was so triggering and it caused me a lot of anxiety for, for the first few months of our relationship to the degree that we ended up breaking up in October. So we started dating in June. We broke up in October. And when we broke up, it really had just gotten to a point where like, I was really anxious. I could tell he wasn't over this person and needed to like process that. And like that felt really bad to me and really triggering for me. And so it just like, it was like, I needed, I needed space from that. and I needed to be out. <laughs> so we broke up and I was devastated. I was like really, really sad, like we're sadder than I'd ever been about anybody. Like this was somebody that I really, I really cared about. I really loved. And I really like, he was the first person I'd been in a lot of relationships, but I'd never been in a relationship with someone who it felt equal, who it yeah. felt like this is somebody that I actually could be, I would want to marry to the, up until this point. I never thought I was going to get married. I didn't want to get married. My parents had a miserable relationship and then got divorced. I, you know, I just, I sort of had in my head that like, I didn't like marriage equal misery and I didn't want that. And so to finally meet someone who I thought I could actually really build a beautiful life with, and then to have it not work, it was like equally as devastating. It was like just as devastating. So we broke up and uh, we, I'd say like a few weeks later, probably a month, within a month, he reached out, reached back out. 
And in that time, I will say, I also, I'd known, I'd started to do a lot of research and sort of started doing my own healing work on myself. I knew I had some childhood traumas coming up. I knew that I was there was like a codependency where if he was anxious, I would feel his anxiety and then I would be anxious and I would think it was about me. So it was like this, this, this anxiety cycle that I was in. Um, I, I started to study attachment styles. I knew that there was like, I had some anxious attachment tendencies that were coming out and he had some avoidant tendencies that were coming out. So we're kind of in that cycle. And so I started studying kind of all of this stuff. Um, and I, I also, I knew that like I was contributing to sort of this, I knew there were like, I had, I was playing a role in this, right? Like in terms of, in terms of how this relationship was feeling. And I felt incredibly caught in a loop. Like I felt very caught in this pattern. So when he reached back out to, you know, pretend he, he reached out to reconnect and like, it wasn't even necessarily to like get back together. But when he reached out, I kind of knew like, if we were going to get back together, like I needed to do something different. Like I needed to be different in this relationship and I needed to take responsibility for like who I was, who I was really being in the relationship. And so we slowly kind of got back together. We never even had a conversation about it. We just sort of started spending time together. And, and I think it was actually right around then after we'd gotten back together that you and I worked together that I, cause I, at that point was really, I was committed. Like I was like, I need help with like really becoming who I want to be in this relationship. I need help with really healing some of this stuff. I need help reprogramming. Like I understood reprogramming. I need help reprogramming how I'm being. I want to heal these, this anxious, you know, attachment style, these tendencies. And yeah. so that's, that's kind of what led me to you. Yeah. Yeah. And I like, okay. So I feel like already that there's so much in there that so many women can resonate with and like if you're not experiencing that now you've experienced that I'm like oh yeah I remember being in that anxious avoidant dance so many times in the past so tell us about the black box is the black box kind of like the anxiety and the childhood stuff the childhood I think it was I think what it was is I knew that my childhood traumas and sort of like the way that I'd grown up and my relationships with my parents, all of that, I knew that it was impacting who yeah. I was and how I was in relationships, but yeah. I didn't know how, and I didn't know how to heal it. Like yeah. I knew that was happening because I had kind of all these dysfunctional relationships, romantic relationships, but mm -hmm. I just didn't know. I didn't really know what was in there. It's like, I knew what was in there in terms of what had happened to me as a kid, but I didn't exactly just, I didn't know how to heal it and process it in a way that would allow me to he heal and process who I was in relationship. Yeah. So for me to really be able to have the relationships that I wanted. And like when you can bring, like here's my childhood stuff, my patterning, my blueprint, and sort of overlay it on this relationship and how I'm showing up. Like that's the important part is sometimes it's a time for couples to do work together. And sometimes it's a time for you, like when you just get really honest with yourself, you're like, actually, this is a whole me thing going on. And there's all this me stuff coming up. doesn't mean he doesn't have his things too, but there's like this, like, like kind of this radical sovereignty, like, like deep, personal responsibility that you're like, I, even if it's not this person that I stay with, I want to move through these specific things, these specific patternings. Do you remember at all? And I mean, it's been a while, but do you remember at all anything that kind of helped you start to like, not just open the box, but start to release it and allow for new patterns to emerge? Like what were some of the concrete ways you were able to start creating new patterns in your relationship with Randall? I think having a foundational understanding of how attachment styles work, what they are, like actually intellectually understanding those mm -hmm. was like, the, was the first piece. It was like having, it was like the foundation for me. But the funny thing where I got stuck is that in a lot of the literature, and I'm sure you and I probably talked about this, in the books that you read, like attached and all these books, they don't talk about healing it. They no. just, they just talk about what it is and, and what you differently, but you're like, but my body's taken over here. I can't even stop. <laughs> exactly. And so I was like, I, I intellectually understood and that was, that was helpful, but yeah. I knew that it was possible to heal this. Like that was, right. I've already been on my healing journey. I was like, you guys are missing something. So 
the big shift was really when you and I started to work together and what you taught me was to connect to my body. Mm. And it was the simple, like, I remember I'll like this, this, I might might have been the first conversation you and I even had, but I just remember you stopped whatever we were talking about. You just stopped me and you had me connect to my body and you had me listen to my body. And it literally changed my life (laughs) because at that point it was like, I, it was like this deep understanding of of my body is communicating to me. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of things. My body is communicating to me and it's communicating messages. And if I stop and I listen, I can hear those messages. And what you start, what you also taught me was how to listen to those messages in times of, of being triggered. So when I'm triggered, what do I do? Right. And so what would happen previously is I would get triggered and I would get stuck in the trigger. And then I would think it was his fault. And I would be focusing on what he was doing and focus on what he was doing wrong. I'd focus. I would constantly be focused on the external. Right. But the trigger is always, it's always an internal experience, right? There's always, it's always what's happening for us. And I, I didn't know that before really. And so what you taught me was when you're feeling triggered, when you're feeling anxious, right? But in this, in this cycle, it's that type of anxiety is really a triggered anxiety, right? Mm-hmm. It, you taught me to go into my body mm-hmm. and to really hear what it was trying to say, to, to witness those fears, to see what was coming up underneath. And then to kind of come back to what was true, like come back to really what 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 I desired to believe or, or come back to, you know, just myself and even just remove sort of the pointing of the finger and come back to like, there is an opportunity for healing for me here. Yes. So I think that's really what was so powerful and so transformational. And I remember for you, it was also like creating a bit of space between being triggered and responding, which is not for everybody because people will never come back. But like, you're like me, if we can just have that little bit of space in between yep. the way you're going to respond. So different. And sometimes so you just don't even need to respond because it's not even about the other person. Even, sometimes you get the clarity. You're like, this isn't even, he didn't mean anything by that. <laughs> like I, that is a whole me thing. Yeah. But mm-hmm. is that totally, totally. You know what I'm actually remembering right now when we had our first conversation before even working together and you were like, I don't know, do I need, maybe I need more therapy. And it was like, yeah, maybe. I can't remember exactly how it came out, but it was something like, what if all the healing is actually in the new choices you're going to make, the new ways you're going to show up in your relationship. Like all that childhood, like your inner mm-hmm. child gets to get, gets to experience healing and like bringing herself back home and into wholeness every time you make a more aligned, empowered choice, like from your wise self today in this relationship. And I remember you were like, okay, cool. Let's work together. <laughs> What you, what you taught me in that moment was that healing can have healing. And I actually really believe this now, the most, some of the most powerful healing actually happens in the moment. Yeah. That's what, that was like, for me, that conversation, I remember what I walked away with was you can do all the, like, you know, talking and talking and talking about the things, but like what's, what's actually so powerful and where, where the most healing happens is like when you're in that moment and you're triggered and the same thing has happened what do you do to break the pattern? What do you do to heal in that moment? And yeah. that's what was so, like, I never had thought about it like that. Mm-hmm. And that's really what I think for our work together, because we, like, I had access to between sessions. That's how we got, I really got to experience that is like, it's not like the triggers just stopped happening when we worked together. It was like, they would happen and I would have my normal meltdown and then I could message you instead of just going straight to him and freaking out or whatever it is I could go to you and so it's like you helped me in that moment you helped me create that space yes to take a breath to process yes and that was like this guided this guided healing process which then I learned how to do on my own yes yes but it was in the moment of the heat of the moment that was that, yes. that's what was so powerful is that you could provide that support and space for me when I was literally like losing my mind and like that like to me that's indispensable like it's not about creating like Emily's zero codependent on me 
<laughs> like it's not yeah. like you developed a dependency on me yeah. it was just this repatterning this practice like I am devoted I want to create a new way like it, it's that piece around like one-on-one -on -one coaching or even an inner circle like that support in between like let us be with you um Eleni I don't know if you're familiar with who Eleni is but she's a support coach and inner circle for one of the groups there's two groups and she would refer to it as the exorcism like <laughs> when she went through inner circle and she wanted to go back into a pattern and we'd all be there like holding her and pulling her back like uh -huh. you can do this like let us hold you and hold you to the vision versus letting you go right back into old patterns. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, how do you see, like, what do you see now, like in your beautiful relationship? There's, I mean, maybe you could tell us a little bit about your beautiful relationship. Like, I feel yeah. like it's just so inspiring. Like yeah. the life you're living right now together <laughs> is also very different than what you were living when we first Yeah. Started. Yeah, so this appeals um, worlds apart almost. Yeah, well, I guess what I, I'll sort of talk a little bit about the transition too. I would say like things shifted really fast after that in terms yeah. of how I felt in the relationship. Like I remember for a long, for like through this whole kind of piece, like again, I was so focused on what he was doing wrong or what he wasn't giving me. Yeah. And, and you really helped me start to shift into what he was doing which was like and who he was and the and the beautiful things about him and it was like I'd somehow even though I was like totally in love with this person and really wanted to be with this person it was like I had this lens on for a while that was like all the things he's doing wrong right mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you helped me shift that lens and so I think the combination of that like all the work that we did together and all these different things pretty soon like all I could see was this like wonderful person in front of me. Like all I could see was this like magical, wonderful hu human. Excuse me. Mm, that's okay. Take your time. <laughs> and like we got back together. That transition was probably November, December of that year. We started talking about moving in together like a few months later. We ended up moving in together in July of 2020. Mm -hmm. We, we, and it was like, it was so fun and so easy. And we found like our dream place. We built this beautiful home together. And then, I'm sorry, I like a little tickle in my throat. Um, <laughs> it's so uncomfortable. I know the feeling. <laughs> let me speak. <laughs> um, and honestly, I think it was like really after that, that like, it was like, we were just in a totally different relationship. Like we were just, it, it was like a different I saw him so differently. It was like a totally different relationship. Like, I, this is like so weird, but I remember like there was this moment where I like saw him. We'd been together like a while at that point. All of a sudden, you know, things had really been starting to go go really, really well. And I just remember thinking like, you're really funny. Like he's really, he's like one of the funniest people that I've ever met now. Like I think I like he's, and he's known for that. Like people know him to be, but he's this quiet, funny and he's so quirky and weird. So you have to like really have an ear out for it. But if you have an ear out for it, he's like the funniest person you've ever met and he'll make you laugh all day long. But for so long in the beginning of our relationship, I like, couldn't even see that. I like, couldn't even, you know? And so it's like, I wasn't even able to see this, the like wholeness of this person. And so all of a sudden it was like, I don't know, it was like this like cloud had been lifted and I just saw this like sh this funny, amazing, like supportive, like human. And, uh, and yeah, our relationship just, just completely cha changed, like not just blossomed, but like changed. Like it's, it was like a different relationship. So we moved in together, we lived together for about a year. And then I had been traveling for so long I always loved traveling and he had done a little bit, but he wanted to travel some, he wanted to do kind of the travel that I'd done. So we put all our stuff in storage and we started traveling August of last year. We did four months in Africa and then we did a few months in Mexico and yeah. then we've been in California now uh, for this summer, trying on different places to live. And so we're kind of exploring where we want to live and we're going to do some travel in Asia again for a few months early next year and then park ourselves somewhere in California at some point next summer. So oh, I love it. Any date for the wedding? No, <laughs> we, we, we need to start planning. We keep looking at each other and we're like, should we plan this wedding? <laughs> um, no, it's overwhelming. 
it's, you know, we'll start the process soon. I think we know we want to do it somewhere, somewhere international, probably Mexico. We want it to be somewhere relatively easy for people to get to, but yeah. we're big, big international people. So, so yeah. we're but we're excited. Yeah. But, but really, I think like the biggest thing, the thing that like, if for anybody who's watching this is like, I think I had in my head that if the beginning isn't like a honeymoon, mm. you know, it's like, you think that if the beginning is not a honeymoon, that there's like, then it can't be the right relationship. Yes. And I think that people don't talk about that enough that like, sometimes that's just not how it is. Like the beginning is you're healing and he's healing and, and you're, you're figuring out how to be in a, in a romantic relationship in a way that you've never done before, especially if it's the person that you want to be with forever. It's like, you're totally. showing up in a different way. Right. Mm-hmm. There's more, there's more, there's higher stakes. Right. Totally. And so, and so, you know, for some people the beginning is honeymoon and that's where it, that's great. But just because it's not in the beginning doesn't, doesn't mean it's not right. And mm-hmm. like, I can't, like, I can't even, it, it's like, I can't even remember now exactly even how it was back then, but I just know it was so different. Like it yeah. was so different. And so the, the, I'm just forever so grateful to you and to the work that we did and to that, that period of time, because like, this is the gift of my life. Like, this is, I call this the like unicorn magic dream. Like this is the thing. I never thought I would meet the person. I never thought I would get married. I, I knew I had so many issues around this thing. And so to be able to be here, to be engaged to this person, to be in this beautiful relationship with this man and to know how that it wasn't just easy in the beginning that I really had to, had to grow to create the relationship that I dreamed of is just, um, you know, it's something that I'll forever be grateful for because it wasn't easy, but, you know, just, I want that. I hope that gives hope to, to anybody who might be your expander. This is what I like, just feel so much as he's your expander and we want it to be like right away, all seamless. And sometimes it is, but a lot of the times it's going to bring up your stuff Mm -hmm. and what a blessing, Mm -hmm. what a blessing, like only like, you know, when you're in it, it doesn't feel quite fun, Mm -hmm. but on the other side of things, you're like, Oh wow. Like I've had a really challenging year with our son, like really, really challenging. And in it, it doesn't feel like a fun time. But on the other side of things, I'm like, oh, I, I actually wouldn't take that year back. Mm. Because I've learned so much. He's learned so much. We have a whole different type of connection now. Mm-hmm. We're so much stronger. You want to talk about unconditional? Mm-hmm. This is unconditional. I love that. I love it so, so much. I love your honesty and your openness. And I appreciate you just sharing the story and I'm so excited to witness what continues to unfold. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you. <sighs> Love you. Oh, there was something we wanted to share too about some of the things you're up to in your world. Oh yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. So we haven't talked about what intuitive business coach. Yes. I, mean, I should introduce that at the start too, but this okay. is one of part, part of Emily's magic. Um, I'm an intuitive business coach and I, what you I want to share is who I am. Um, <laughs> I have an incredible class coming up. I have a mini program coming up mm-hmm. and it is called soulful sales. Mm-hmm. And uh, I created this class specifically because I'm, I'm, wildly passionate about coaching like what well, as you can tell like I love it experienced the transformation that is possible with coaching I love being a coach I love this industry I I love coaches I love us I love who we are and what we do I think it's so powerful and I I see in my conversations with coaches as an intuitive business coach that being able to invite people into our offers in a way where we feel good and we feel confident and we feel excited is one of the biggest challenges. Mm -hmm. And so I've created this mini program to really help coaches build confidence around inviting people into their offers, because that's literally where our impact happens is in our offers, is in our containers. So I have this, it's completely free. It's a free mini program called Soulful Sales to really help you build confidence around inviting people into whatever offer you have, whether it's a program or a mastermind or one-on-one, it is happening in two weeks. Yeah. Can you leave us the link underneath? Yeah, the video? I will. 
I honestly, Emily, first of all, Emily is a projector. So by, by just by default, she's just makes an exceptional coach. And one of the reasons, and I wanted to say this earlier is one of the reasons our work was so powerful is it's not because of me. It's because of who you are and how you show up to the sessions and your openness and your curiosity and the way you integrate, which I already like are the markers of an exceptional coach. So I have quite a number of coaches in this group. So for whoever's watching this, and maybe actually I'll grab the link and send it to a few people as well. Like, just check out Emily's magic. Like, I, I'm not saying it, she's truly <laughs> such a gift, such a gift. So yeah, look that up. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you froze. I love you. Thank you so much. I love you too. Okay, we'll say we are back. We'll say bye to the group and I want to say bye to you personally. Lots of love, ladies. If you have okay. questions for me, if you have questions for Emily, please leave them. Just tag us below. Bye. Yes, 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 yes.